Hello, guys. Uh, am I getting audio here? I got to check. I don't think I am. <laughs> Such is my life. Let me know if you guys can hear me. I'm really... Uh, my kids... Can you hear me, Randy? <laughs> this is horrible. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Um, welcome to a live stream. My, my sons, and I love them to death, but they play around on the work computer, and they shouldn't do that. And as a result, uh, things get uh, messed up. So... Um, a number of weeks ago, my son, Michael texted me. He's like, yo dad, can I go in your office so I can have a nice, really nice, peaceful environment to work? And I said, yeah, no problem. And then I, then my other sons texted me. He's like, yo dad, Michael's like downloaded Xbox and he's playing games on your computer and stuff. I'm like, all right, all right, we're done. We're done. So at, at any rate, uh, I'm sorry about the mic, but I'm really grateful you guys are here. Um, I, I just wanted to touch base with you. I'm trying to keep more up to date on these live streams with all of you guys. Hello from India, Russia. There's tons of you on here. Thank you guys so much. Um, I am uh, just trying to stay more in touch with you guys. I'm trying to do these uh, these weekly. As you guys know, I've been doing a podcast. So go and check out my podcast, jasonlanier.com slash podcast, guys. There's really good information in there. I try to make them really fun and educational. I really do. So go check out jasonlanier.com slash podcast. But um, yeah, I'm trying to, and I do those every Monday. And so that's the point I'm making here is I'm really trying to get back to where um, I'm at a much better place where I'm able to, you know, uh, schedule things and, and get to things and, and, and be able to uh, deliver for all of you. So Utah checking in. What's up, Scott? What's up, Scott? Um, I have to know why the 20 millimeter over the 24? Uh, you've been a fan for years. Thank you. Uh, why? Um, just a the little bit of extra width, to be honest with you. The extra width makes makes a big difference. Um, I do like the Sony 24 G Master. It's a really, really nice lens. But um, but no, I I uh, I definitely uh, I definitely like the uh, the 20. It's it's a good it's good stuff. And guys, I went through a phase where I was buying everything, and then um, and then I pretty much had some sort of a, a variation of everything. So that's why. You know, do I need the 24 G Master? No, not really. But um, it's a really good lens, it is. Um, looking, thank you, Mark. How you doing, brother? My man, Mark. My man, Mark. Um, long time no see. Uh, yeah, for, for Diana Parrott. Well, thank you for being here. A7R4, the A7S3, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't played with the A7S3 yet. I haven't asked Sony to send me one. I, I, I could. Um, but uh, I need to get back into those gear reviews. I know you guys like them. Uh, um, so I'm, I'm trying to work on all those things, but, uh, but, uh, but definitely, uh, the a seven R four, I never, Sony sent me one. I didn't care for it because I didn't like the focus. Something that was always awesome on the Sony's was the remarkable focus system. And to me, that's what set it apart from the other camera companies and uh, the a seven R four. And I'm not the only one who said this, the a seven R four was lacking when it came to focus capabilities. And I would switch it up and go from the R4 to the R3. And the R3 is my favorite. I love that camera. But I go from the R4 to the R3 and it would not focus nearly as well and it would miss. Um, sometimes the resolution on the R4 makes you think you didn't miss. And that's, that can be a little uh, tricky, but but you definitely can miss. Um, I'm not using my R3 right now because it, it fried or something. <laughs> And Sony has been so nice and they've asked me to send it in and I still haven't sent it in. And I love you, Johnny. I know it's like three weeks. I was supposed to send it in. So that's why you guys see me shooting a lot of the A9 right now. But, uh, but uh, it's really cool. It's really cool stuff. When it's not just my friend, hope you're doing well. Thank you. Paraportrait. Um, nice lighting. I'm using the, um, yeah, the guys, this is awesome. Thanks. This is just, this is simple lighting. It's cheap and simple. I have all the Titans and the Nova pros and AOS and everything else. And um, I'm using just a Neo2 here on 2% with uh, diffusers, built, uh, the, the little diffuser filters. It's, you can, it's called the teleconference kit uh, on the Rotolite website. It's really cheap, and it makes your broadcast look amazing. Oh, I do have an Anova Pro 2 in the back. That's, that's sliding the back. 
That is true. <laughs> but it's cheap. It's cheap as it's cheap as all ever, man. Did you know that you've been that you have a big fan in India? That is me. Well, thank you, Rias. Thank you, Jason. I like the past gallery site been using. Yes, yeah, pretty cool stuff, right? So a uh, couple updates on some cool stuff. I spoke to a really cool couple today. Uh, there's a good chance I'll be going out and doing an African safari um, in July. And I'm going <laughs> to, they're going to hire me to go out there and um, just make, help them take good pictures. <laughs> if that's not awesome, I don't know what it is. And the really cool thing is, and for those who don't know, I'm an Eagle Scout. So none of this bothers me. And so the really cool thing is, um, they have a, um, a boat, like a, a boat that we're going to float down the river um, and then camp on the sides of the rivers and animals. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, man. That is exactly my kind of thing. So she's like, are you sure you're okay with it? I said, are you kidding? That's what I live for. Hello, Indiana Jones, mother freaker. So no, it's excited. I'm excited for that. Um, lots of really cool stuff coming. I have a model flying in. Um, and we're going to be doing shoots here from the, uh, 13th through the 16th. Um, that's going to be really awesome, but really, really cool stuff going on guys. And I'm really, um, grateful for all of you. I use my new two, you use your new two for your seminars or your webinars. Yeah, it's great. It really is great guys. Look, this is all that the lighting is. Oh, I can't disconnect it. My bad. So <laughs> I wish I could show you, but this is being shot. Hello, focus. Come on. There we go. There we go. Perfect. But um, you're not that far from me in Davenport. I don't think I'm near Davenport. Um, did you do you get any flagship cameras before they come out? Sure. If I ask for them, uh, they sent me the a7 III before it came out. But um, but no, I guys, I feel ready to do it again. But I got burned out on all of the camera reviews. I got burned out on it. I got burned out on all of it. And it was a really cool time to be part of that whole mirrorless wave. And I am very happy and proud to say I, I was one of the fathers of mirrorless and pushed that technology and help get it out there. But uh, it's also can be all consuming where you feel like you're not, you know, I wasn't guys. I never, ever wanted to be a gear review guy. I didn't want to be like the other YouTube channels. I wanted to share my work on my YouTube channel, but I know you guys appreciate them. So I'm trying to balance that, but that's why you haven't seen those for a while is um, you guys got to understand the way it works too. For the most part, when the other channels get cameras and I don't care who, what the channel is, this is freaking truth. This is gospel. Okay. This is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, they get the cameras and they play with it for an hour, two hours. And then they're going to just, they're going to dispense this, an enormous wisdom as to what these cameras and lenses do. And they're misleading thousands, tens of thousands, millions of people. They really are because these individuals, for the most part, I'm sure there's some out there who do a better job, but for the most part, they have no freaking clue what they're talking about. They're just trying to get views from awesome people like you. When I get gear, like when I call up B&H and I'm like, yo, I need the Canon R5 and I need the 2870 millimeter lens and I need this, 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 this 8512 and the 512, blah, blah, blah. You guys know me. You've seen me do those projects. I'll go out for weeks and weeks and weeks. So when I invest in a project of a gear review, it's such a an enormous deal for me compared to the vast majority of what other people do. In fact, when camera companies come out, like when Sony, when Sony guys went – pre-COVID, but when Sony has something up, they'll, they'll have all the YouTubers come out. They'll pay for their airfare. They'll put them up in a hotel and then they'll give them gear for a day or two. And then everyone is in a rat race to create gear review videos because they want to be the first out there. This is the way that it works. Now, these folks don't get paid for this, but they get this all expense paid trip to go somewhere and have and be put up and have this gear. Um, and then they hope to turn it around and get reviews out of you. So that's the way that this works. Um, and um, that's just, it's hard for me to get into that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, but it's, I love to create. I don't, I wasn't, these guys, the vast majority of these people doing these reviews are not creators. And they're going to, somebody may be mad at me for saying that, but they're not. They're not. I, they're YouTube creators, but they're not creators in the sense that they're creating art. 
because their whole purpose is to get you guys to watch their videos. So I want you guys to watch my videos too, but I want you to watch them because you're learning something and, and not just selling gear. So everybody's got to sell gear, no problem. But anyway, I said enough about that. Jason, like I told you last stream, I bought the, a the AOS 2 kit. Two days later, I bought the Nova Pro 2. I guess next month, maybe I the Titan. <laughs> Fall in love with the quality light. I'm going to sell my aperture lights. Yeah, get, yeah the aperture, it, it's good stuff, but it's not it's not Rotolite. Not a chance. Um, you guys, you talk about making money. Um, that's, you know. That's one way to make money is get great lights. Hey, I missed your workshop in Orlando last year. You're going to come back? Yeah, I'd love to come back. I'd love to come back to Orlando. Um, it's a great place. What up, Jason? Wondering if you had any thoughts on Lightroom versus Capture One. I'm not a fan of Capture One. I'm not a fan of Adobe. I feel about Adobe the same way I feel about Apple. They are necessary evil. Adobe is – everybody goes loses their mind over the fact that it's a subscription – but, you know, to some people, it's nice to pay nine bucks a month instead of having to dish out three or four hundred dollars for the newest version of Photoshop whenever it comes out. The other thing for those people watching this, us old school people remember the days where Adobe would come out and then they wouldn't update camera raw for the new version of, of Photoshop. And so when that would happen, you were stuck, man. So if you had a new camera, but an older version of Photoshop, you had no choice but to upgrade to Photoshop. So for some people, it sucks to pay the ten bucks a month, but you got to keep in mind. You know, sometimes that four hundred dollars is, is that's a chunk of change for people, man. Uh, I'm still at a three ninety. Wow, dude, it's a ton of work to do reviews. You killed it when the industry most needed it. Thank you, Mark, and uh, thank you. It is a ton of work, and if you want to do them right, guys, I, I I can't say that enough. I want you guys to believe in the stuff that I do. I really do. Um, tired of unformed re lens reviews on my company's products. Mark, for those who don't know, he works for Tamron. He's a really good friend of mine. So, Mark, send me lenses. I'll do reviews on them. I have nothing better to do right now. I'll, I'll put your lenses through the paces. And they suck. People, not the lenses. I'm just telling you guys, I. if you only knew how bad and how awful the reviews truly are and how much these individuals do not understand the gear they are touching i feel it is incredibly disingenuous for me to pick up a piece of gear that i don't really understand and then to articulate and disseminate information to all of you and then people make a lot of purchasing decisions and and see once i tell you hey go buy this a6000 or go buy the nikon z62 or whatever you've for the most part blown your money so if i misled you um I really hurt you. I set you back. So anyway, I've said enough about that. I think it is in the lighting and knowing what you want out of your camera and potential of your lens push. I get it. Absolutely. Um, Zone Television agrees. We know you use the gear fully, which is the main reason why we value your opinions and review. We're a needy bunch. Hey, I love you guys. And like I said, I, I'm feeling more energized to do that crap again, which is why you're seeing me live stream every week. You're seeing me put the podcast out, jasonlander.com slash podcast. Go listen to that bitch, man. It is good stuff. And it is information you guys need. And it is unfiltered. It's the name of the podcast. I'm telling you, when you listen to that, you're going to be like, damn, nobody talks about this stuff. Well, welcome to me. I am so back. You guys have no effing idea. Um, Will you go further doing, uh, you will go further doing your own videos than doing reviews. It just depends. You know, you do a gear review video. Guys, if I release a gear review video on a7S3, within two days, it's going to have 50, 100,000 views. No joke. And that's how YouTubers make their money. See, I never made my, the I YouTube was always discretionary income for me. If I had it, great. If I didn't have it, it didn't matter. So for a lot of these other folks, they live all off of YouTube, which is why they have to do that. So I don't begrudge them for that, but there is a distinction between us. I, I, I just share my work on YouTube. I'm not, I never, ever wanted to be a YouTube superstar. Never. I just use YouTube to be able to communicate with you awesome folks. And I use YouTube to be able to live out some of my dreams. That's the it. Jason, you sexy beast. You, your diet and exercise are paying off. Thank you. You guys want to see? This is not tricks. Watch this. Check this out. Look at that, guys. Come on, focus. I'm slimming down. It's coming off. 
That's not even sucking in, guys. That is straight up hard work right there. I'm working my little tukas off. Um, you're not going to pay for Lightroom? Okay, don't pay for it. It's fine. It doesn't matter to me either way. Hey, that Mac, Mac Mini has USB ports. I'm so tired of Macs too. I'm so tired of them. Um, I started a photography Photoshop version one. Holy crap, you're old. Um, have you heard anything from the angry photographer? I'm not talking about that ass. I'm not just not talking about him. I've removed toxic people out of my life. I've removed toxic hanger ons from my life and I'm never going back. So if you ask me a question about any of those types of people, you will never get a response because I am never going back to toxicity because when you get in the mud with pigs, you get muddy guys and I'm not going there. Absolutely not. Those people are absolute cretins. They are the uh, dregs of society, and I will not go there. But do I have any love loss for them? No, they can all rot. F off. Not to the questioner, to those people. Photography got back watching your videos. Awesome. Hi, Jason. Any Christmas gift ideas for photographers? Great question. Please exclude Rotolites. I spent enough money on them this year. <laughs> well, thanks for the question. Um, Christmas gifts... I I mean, that is so dependent upon the photographer. I mean, it really depends on um, what you need, brother. I, it, I don't know. I, th I don't know uh, because that just, I mean, from cameras to lights to everything, it depends on what you don't have. I mean, you're going to buy something that you don't have. So uh, I, I, if you're more specific, I can help you. I cannot understand why no one is looking at the older Nikon's the images are uneffing believable because they're not efficient. They're inefficient. And if, when you're in a business where you guys got to understand when you're in a business where everything is so fast now, people are just running by taking taking a picture on their phone and then it's up online. It's it's just it's it's inefficient. That's the best way to put it. Um, oh, I've learned a lot from watching your videos, even though I've been a photographer for 18 years. I'm always learning something new. Thank you. Well, thank you. Sigma 105, yes, it's a great lens. It's just heavy as hell. Um, what's your best advice to fix that Sony color that's a bit more red than others? Just shoot raw or use a gray card. Uh, adjust the background, then uh, adjust the background, then adjust flash to bring subject to correct exposure equals fake skies. That's right, baby. Taylor Payne, workshops 2021, are they starting back up? You better believe it. As soon as this COVID nightmare is over, uh, we're going to be, uh, we are going to be all over it guys. Trust me. So as soon as this COVID nightmare is over, we are all about it. Like I told you, y'all need to do come to Pennsylvania. I'd, I'd love to come to Pennsylvania. It's too freaking cold right now, man. It's too freaking cold. I, I'll come back when it's, um, um, and then we'll go from there. Sorry. I started reading ahead. Um, a good stiff wind would blow you away. Hey man. I, I have a lot of years left to kick ass. So, I mean, a lot. So anyone who thought I was going away, whoo, they have no idea what's coming. Seriously, no idea. Jason misled me to getting the Sony A9 when I was supposed to get an A6000. Yes, I blame Jason when I was confronted by my wife. Thanks, Jason. You are so welcome. How much do you do I weigh? Right now, I weigh 224 pounds. 224. And two months ago, two and a half months ago, to be fair, I weighed 262. And my highest was 292. So how about that for a box of apples? 292 down to 224. So I'm almost 70 pounds down from my forever highest. And you know, it was interesting. That was such a big deal for me, guys, because I'll never forget being in Alaska. And I was in Alaska when I weighed 292. And I know because my fat ass was going to go on a trip to take pictures of the grizzly bears. And you go, either go on a helicopter or you go in Cessnas. Um, and if you guys haven't done this before, um, if you're a certain weight, they will not let you fly. And that certain weight in Alaska for that bear excursion is 300 pounds. Well, <laughs> so I pay for the bear excursion. I paid $700 to do this and it's only for eight hours. And you, and this is in Homer, Alaska, and there's nothing else around. So I was really nervous the night before. So the night before, I'm like not eating. I'm like trying to drink water to flush my system. And, <laughs> and so then I go to a scale and I'm like, you weigh 292. And that was like just wearing underwear. 
<laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, this is a problem. And so I, cause you guys got to imagine it's Alaska. So you're wearing um, boots, you're wearing parkas, you're wearing uh, waterproof because we flew on a seaplane. This one was a seaplane. We flew on a seaplane and landed in the water. And so you had to walk from the water all the way, you know, onto shore where the bears were. And so you're wearing gi gigantic boots. I don't know what they're called, galoshes. I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm 292 pounds. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And so <laughs> I remember going into that place and I clocked in because they make you do it with your gear on because clearly that's what's going to go on the plane. Not the gear, meaning the camera gear. I finagled that one too. But, um, but I, I remember weighing in and I weighed it like 298 and I'm like, holy crap, Jason, this is enough, enough. And so from that point forward, I've been working on it, but, but, um, it's been a huge game changer for me to have my hip replaced. That's been an enormous game changer for me. And that's led to uh, exercise that started in really June, May, June, and it's continued to now. And I'm exercising like a, a madman. So um, losing the Tugas. Yep. YouTube is good for marketing. It is. I've been shooting Sony for about 10 years thinking of moving to GFX. What you say? Uh, no. Uh, I, the only person I ever saw at GFX made it look like the worst camera in the world. Jason, remember we, remember me when you get back in action? Absolutely. Um, I've seen some reviewers give a review without ever touching the new equipment. They just use the spec. It's, I know it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Quick question from Taylor. Uh, if you can, I really, really want to show my favorite shot I've ever taken. How can I do so? You want to show it to me? Just send it to Jason at jailpros.com. My man, my brother, Terry Fulton is in Tampa. I'll see you soon, man, because I, I, I come to Florida all the time. I love that joint. Uh, what, Bill at raw. Absolutely. I absolutely remember you. London anytime soon. Yeah, we're Rotolite and I are we're gonna do a world tour as soon as all this stuff ends. So guys, trust me, as soon as COVID's over, it's choo choo back on the train. You you best believe that. Just picked up the Canon RF 1535, loving it. Yeah, those Canon, those those RF lenses are awesome. Where do you buy your cool jackets? Ooh, that's a good question. Sometimes I'll get some of my jackets from um, Buckle. In and there's this a store here in the, the US. Buckle has some good jackets. Um, check buckle. That's one of the main places I get those jackets and they have like a $200 version and they have like the $800 versions. And so you have to choose which one, choose the right leather jacket that works for you. Hey, Jason, don't you, don't you think new cameras and lens prices are crazy right now? Canon R5 and R, RF lens. I think DSLR and lens can still do the same photos without spending a lot of money changing systems. Um, again, I'm a big believer in, um, in the mirrorless system. But um, can cameras do it? Yes. Yes, they absolutely can. You could still do it with the D850, D750, D800, even a D700, really, but um, or any of the Canons as well. But but the future is mirrorless, man. The, 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 the present is mirrorless, even though all of – you guys hear about Photokina? Photokina just went out of business. For those who don't know, Photokina was the largest photography convention in the world in Germany. I went the last two times, and they only did it every other year. So I went in 2016 and 2018. So I went to the last Photokina, and it was pretty depressing. If you guys went to Imaging USA – I talk a lot about this in the podcast, by the way. But um, Imaging USA, Sony didn't – Sony had people singing at their booth. They didn't even have – people speaking that was really odd and then wppi was depressing um ask any it's it's crazy the industry is changing so much so how did i get on that again i don't know um <laughs> uh any more florida videos coming yeah lots i have tons from florida a stiff wind would blow me away well i still got more to lose but i'm working on it how is the focus bad on our uh maybe talking about the r4 it just misses it missed for me hey jason i've had a few issues with my d850 while shooting portraits i believe you used to shoot with it can you remember the focus system you used um i've never used the 850 i used the 800 and the 700 i never used the 50 series either the 750 or the 850 um but um back back in the dinosaur ages uh, land of the lost if you're old enough you know that reference but back in the land of the lost years um when i shot nikon um, I would just use, I would, for the most part, guys, I would always just do the focus point looking good. Thank you, Steve. Oh, Steve, 
my trainer. Steve is my my trainer. Steve is helping me out with all of this stuff. Looking good, right, Steve? See, I, I know when I come on these live streams, Steve is gonna um, Steve is gonna really harp on me. So so I got to be good. Um, what did I change in my diet? Ask Carlos Cartagena. Um, what did I change in my diet? I changed first. Okay, now people are not going to agree with this. And I'm going to, when I do like my transformation video, some of this will come out and some people will not agree with what I've done and whatever. I don't effing care. I had to get the weight off. So I went to a really low calorie diet and then I was traveling a lot. When I was traveling a lot, um, it was very difficult because, um, you know, guys, you know me, I'm not, I'm not a, a, a boring photographer who sits, okay, I was going to say, I was going to list off examples of that, but, but that could offend somebody. So, <laughs> but I'm not a boring photographer. I'm out there shooting. I'm getting chased in prisons and, and other stuff. Anyway. So when I'm doing those things, I'm in crazy places and it's really difficult. And yes, you could pack a lunch, blah, 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 blah. But when I first started, I didn't do any of that. So what I did was, and I'm not kidding. Um, I would go and I would eat three times a day usually. And I would go get a half salad at Wendy's and I would get the Parma. <laughs> Steve's listening to this and I would get the Parmesan chicken Caesar salad. It's 240 calories. So I would eat about nine, eight to 900 calories a day. Okay. And I did that for a solid two months. And during those two months, months, during those two months, I lost, um, 35 pounds. Um, and I was active, but because I was heavy, um, I couldn't exercise as much as I am now, not nearly to the extent that I am now. So, um, so that's how I dropped a lot of weight fast. Now, the second stage was, um, I got stuck at around 200 and I think 35 pounds. So <laughs> don't listen to this, Steve. So then I went and I, <laughs> and I bought Jimmy Dean. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I bought Jimmy Dean, um, breakfast meals, like the turkey sausage, the low calorie ones. And then I bought, um, what were they? Oh, healthy choice. So I would eat, when I got home, I started eating that. And now Steve has completely converted me. Good man to all whole foods. I'm cooking all of my own foods. You guys would be very proud of me. I'm eating protein shakes. Um, today, Steve, I had cranberries and almonds. Um, and I had eggs for breakfast that I cooked on my own. So it's making me much more of a well-rounded man. So that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, okay. Let me get some questions. Let's shoot film brother. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not a big fan. I didn't, I don't even, I didn't have a road light. Good to see you, Jason. You too, Jason Wade. When am I coming to Chicago? As soon as all this bull crap's over is a nine or R three still worth buying over the Absolutely. I, I don't think that A92 or the R4 are honestly worth it. So sorry, I just don't. Um, what type of bag do you prefer to use? Think Tank. I'm looking at uh, four by five cameras for next year. Route 66, baby. All right, William. William's been trying to get me to go on this film film shoot. Um, I'm just worried. He's going to turn into like a serial killer and want he's going to ask me to put on lipstick and take clothes off. So I'm a little worried about that, but he knows I love him. Learn how learn how to live and not clutter my feed. Uh, okay, perfect. How often should I update my model release form? You know, whenever you have something substantive happen, um, you know, something substantive change. But you know, I I wouldn't don't think you'd have to do it that that often. Um, best image quality I've seen is off the Canon 5D SR, but good luck getting your image in focus. Yeah, there's that and. Uh, and again, guys, there's so much resolution. You don't need that much. Shows were going down regardless. COVID just accelerated their demise. Exactly. Hey, Jason, however you want to come to Mexico, as soon as all this crap's over with, COVID has changed everything. Mm -hmm. Not Land of the Lost. Terry, you and I are going to watch Land of the Lost together. We're going to sit down. We're going to get some popcorn. Not a lot, Steve, but we're going to get a little bit of popcorn and we're going to watch Land of the Lost together. Jason, what do you think about using cloud services, backup photos? I think it's a good idea. And I use pass, not sponsored by them. I could be, but I'm not. Hello, Jason from Japan. Hello. Uh, I'm going to screw this up. Kuichi Yamamoto. I lost 30, 35 pounds in three months and all I did was give up bread and that's awesome. 
Um, sounds not feeling you would pass out. Yeah, it, it was kind of like that. Is there a good adapter for the A6000? Want to adapt Nikon? Nope, there isn't. There is not. The A6000 adapting Nikon lens is good luck. What exercises are you finding work best? Um, I'm lifting weights five days a week. Treadmill, I bought a rolling machine. Um, and not the expensive ones, guys. I mean, it's it's. I'm not spending a ton of money on this. The fact that the rowing machine is, or the the treadmill is a Gold's Gym one that I've had for 10 years. And the rowing machine I bought off of Amazon. It's it's by a company called Sunny. <laughs> and I think it was like $280 or something. In other words, I did not spend a lot of money on this jazz. So hello, it's COVID. So he's stuck on the fast and easy. Um, um, I don't know. You know well-rounded too many donuts well i don't know if you're being rude but if you are you can um you can find a better place to be because that's where i'm at now all gearheads unite just a spotless nikon df absolutely i used to shoot film haha no longer i have a df it used it get used a lot perfect um or in low light camera blows in low light <laughs> yes it does <laughs> Just a little lipstick. I have several DF lenses. Hey man, it's good to see you talking photography again. Absolutely. I knew you were uh, who I knew who you were talking about when you said a certain. Yeah, you're right. We don't wear masks on the beach. <laughs> I don't know why, Terry. I almost said something inappropriate to you, but um, <laughs> but I didn't. Mark says no such thing as a good Nikon adapter. No, there really isn't. Unfortunately, there really isn't. Oh, I'm very happy. Well, I'm very happy to meet you too. Uh, why would you bother that junk lens anyways? I have a ton of Nikon glass. That lens isn't good. Sorry. I don't know what lens you're talking about, but perfect. Oh, probably the Nikon 70 to 300. Can you adapt Nikon lenses to A9 or R3? Um, yes, you can better to the to both of them. But guys, Nikon glass. See, Canon glass can be adapted really well because it, it has it's electronically driven. Well, there's a motor that has to drive the focus uh, and the lens on the Nikon, which is why Nikon has never been adaptable to Sony very well. Now, the Nikon, the old, um, excuse me, Nikon lenses adapt well to the night, adapt much better to the Nikon mirrorless, but not to Sony. They really don't. Um, nice to see you again, Jason. Um, greetings from Norwegian Ken Wheeler. You remember me? I. <laughs> Yes. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? What's up, baby, baby? What's up, Mike Nebula? He, Mike, Mike's trying to get me to come to Bakersfield, but California is on a lockdown, so that's not going to happen right now. Hello from Seattle. Big memory cards or smallish memory cards? I prefer 64. 64 seems to be my good one. 128s, if they go out, you're dead. 32s usually aren't enough. 64 seems to be my sweet spot. Hello from Pakistan. Hello, baby boy. Have you worked with the Stella Pro LED and compared it to the Rotolite? I have not um, because the I don't care about other LEDs, guys. They don't they don't strobe. So Rotolite gives me something nobody else can do. And so why well, try anything else unless they did something better, which good luck, because I'm telling I'm giving Rotolite a lot of advice on what to come out with. Just believe that. Syed Naki says, I love you. Well, I am in love with you as well. Thank you. Um, you can use the A6000 with an adapter for Nikon lenses. I use my 6300. Yes, you can, but good luck getting anything moving fast or whatever else. It's possible, um, but it's, it's there's nothing like native glass, my friends. I just sent you the email. Would love it to give you a live feedback if at all possible. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. You're putting yourself on the spot. Let me take a look. Dun, dun, dun. It's downloading. <laughs> it's still downloading. Well, we'll I'll, I'll do it when it comes. Uh, Jason. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> he sent a nude. <laughs> he sent a nude image. So I was going to show you guys a shot, but they don't allow that on YouTube. It's a very pretty image. Very pretty image, Taylor. I did not expect that, but it's a very pretty image. Great job. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, have you reviewed the Nikon Z5 or should I wait for the Z6? I'm staying with Nikon because I have a collection, which makes sense. I was told the F-mount adapter works well. It does work well. And um, I will, I, I, guys, I'm going to get back into the reviews for you, I promise. 
uh, B and H is a great, a uh, great sponsor and they send me anything I ask. So I haven't asked them for anything for a while. I was like, you guys know, I, I, I got my hip replaced. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I got my hip replaced in February. Then there's COVID. Then I was doing a documentary and now I'm finally back in the swing of everything once. And I denied update my, it's just been a whole thing, but I'm back and you guys are going to love it. Um, Taylor Payne sent me nudes. Uh, Mark Morris, fifth, fifth generation Metabones for Canada. Sony's best adapter currently available for EFTE. Couldn't agree more. Old Nikon glass was good when it was AI series. New stuff like G plastic. No bueno. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty plastic. What can I find your editing tutorials? Patreon.com slash Chase Lunar Photography. I do all of my editing tutorials on Patreon. So your favorite Sony mirrorless is the A9. No, it's really the R3, but the R3 blew up on me. Now, when I say blew up, that is a little bit hyperbolic. It did not actually blow up. It will not turn on. So I'm sending it to Sony. They'll take care of it because they're awesome. And then that will be my favorite camera again. But that's why I have the A9, which Sony was very nice on that too, because I dropped my A9 and I destroyed it. And then they sent me a new one. So that was nice. Thank you, Matt. Um, I bought the Sony A7A3 after watching your reviews. Still shooting with it. Just want to add more lenses. Yeah, it's a great camera. It really is. I'd recommend using smaller memory cards just in case the card goes bad. 1635 uh, 2.8 G Master versus 1224 G Master. Oh, 1635. You're going to get a lot of distortion when you go 12, when you go 12, 11. Um, it's a really funny story I should tell sometime on why I still to this day shoot with the Canon 11 to 24 versus the Sony 12 to 24. It's because somebody in Sony, um, <laughs> I don't know if I should share this stuff. Somebody in Sony pissed me off. And so just to spite them, I bought it and used it because they wouldn't send it to me. And then when I got home from a trip that they wouldn't send it to me from, and I made a video about the Canon 11 to 24, all of a sudden I had two new lenses sitting on my home when I came home. That's a crazy story. I should tell sometime. Uh, hello from Romania. What is up? You should come to Cleveland. I, I, I would love to come to Cleveland. Brother, <laughs> I can't believe he sent me a full on nude. That was hilarious. Uh, would you buy a used lens from B&H Red? Yes, I would. Absolutely. I When I first started moving into Sony, I actually bought a lot of lenses off of B&H. Adorama? Yeah, not so much. Adorama, I've had hit or miss with their used lenses but bnh i've always had really good um response with their used lenses back better than ever baby you got that right um bum 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 how are the boys family they're doing great welcome back thank you hey jason you are so talented i admire you keep it up from socal thank you jennifer where are you located honey because i is in and i know that's not gra grammatically correct but i am in uh, southern california as well what do you think about the Lawa glass for the a7 III. Hey, if you like manual focus lenses, go for it. I have the Lawa. What do I have on that? I have a, I do have one Lawa lens, but Lawa lens. I do have, do have one Lawa lens that I shot in the Muir Forest in uh, Northern California. But um, other than that, they send me stuff. They're trying to send me stuff all the time. Not interested. I'm just going to start taking Tamron lenses from work so we can, we can do honest reviews. Uh, what do you think about... Uh, I did a cemetery shoot today and received a few friends criticize me. What are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts on shooting in a cemetery? By the way, photos came out amazing. Um, I love um, the celebration of life. Now that sounds funny when you talk about a funeral or a cemetery, but I remember years ago, Maddie and I were in Salem, Massachusetts, and it was around Halloween time. In fact, it was just like three days before. Um, and we went to a graveyard and shot on the graveyard. Now I got massive, massive um, negative feedback from that. And I remember telling somebody, and this is all I can say, be respectful, be, be whatever. But somebody asked, of course, be respectful. But we weren't trampling all over the graves or creating a huge party. We're doing a really nice shoot. And I remember people at the time said to me, somebody, I got into an online conversation with somebody and they said, how would you like it if somebody was dancing all over your grave? And I said, well, number one, um, if you saw me dancing, now this was years ago. I said, if you saw me dancing, it wouldn't be very fast. But number two, I wasn't dancing on the grave. And number three, if I was sitting, if I, if my booty was sitting down in that in that uh, coffin, and people were upstairs having a, a wonderful life and celebrating it, I'd be all for it. I'd be like, "This is amazing," because otherwise, it just sits there. It's grass. 
it's grass, guys. It's I don't know. I don't understand people. It, it, respectful, yes, but not ludicrous. I don't get it. Um, Sony thirty five one four G Master rumors excited or care less? Care less? Don't really care. Um, I think this COVID thing is going to get us photographers our creative juices flowing again. I sure hope so. Sony equals Sony soon, only not yet. Send order next year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you think hypersync is the future or is HSS still keeping up? Uh, it just depends on what you really want to shoot. It just depends on what you're really trying to do with your work output. But um, I think so many people are built on it's going to be a, if, if it were to be that much of a game changer, it would be um, a pretty di fundamental change for people to get rid of all their high speed sync gear and go with a hyper sync. So we'll see. Say that three times fast. Lawa wins, Lawa wins, Lawa wins. And I did that. I did that incorrectly on purpose. Um, Lawa 15 millimeter zero D is great for real estate. I'm sure it is. What mics do you use? Well, this is, what is this? This is a um, raising. Do you guys like it? Does it sound good? This was just a Walmart special. So I hope you like it. Uh, other mics I use road mics um, for, you know, filming outdoors, shotgun mics. I've used Sony mics. Uh, what's the other one? What's the one with the S? There's a, there's a mic with an S. Uh, it's not Sakonic. I can't think of it, but there's another one that I use. But anyway, and I but I've broken all of them, and it's oh, it's always because they get wet, they get soaked. Um, is there a specific lens um, you wish Sony would bring out? Yeah, one thirty five one eight. Oh, they already did that. Um, God, a one hundred five would be fun, but. Sony has a lot of lenses now. I wish Sony would get a little bit more um, fancy and go with some wider aperture lenses, like some like Canon. I think that's what attracts me so much to Canon is they're they're different with their lens and they're hell expensive, but they're different with the offerings that they provide, um, and that's why I think Canon and Sony have a future in mirrorless, and I think Nikon is walking a slow death because of their refusal to adapt oh my gosh nikon what the hell and so I, that's the part i don't get guys but c'est la vie i mean c'est la vie for those who speak french um uh, jason how long does it take sony to return gear when you send it for repair um <laughs> and then ian says i did a nude shoot for a model in a graveyard partially nude yeah i don't i don't know about that that that's i'm gonna leave that up to you but i don't i don't know it, it also depends. I mean, did you do it when other people are around? I mean, if somebody's going to visit their family and there's a naked chick running around, that's probably not the best thing to do. But, um, you know, <laughs> it's a crazy world. Um, how long, Sony? Um, fast. They're fast. Now, somebody's going to say, well, Jason, that's because you and Sony are friends. Sure, sure. I, I, I could get preferential treatment. I don't know because I don't know what it's like to not have friends at Sony. But they always take great care of me. And I've also heard great feedback that they've taken care of people who um, don't necessarily have those relationships. So hopefully just make sure you're part of SPS guys. If you're not part of SPS and you own any sort of substantial amount of gear, you're making an enormous mistake by not signing up for SPS. Do you have any favorite locations to shoot in NOLA? Yeah. Six flags that I just broke into again. Um, there's tons of places out there. I, Oak Alley Plantation. Now that's an hour or some oh, out of way, but that's awesome. I, we just got, as you guys know, I've said it on previous casts. We got chased out of Little Wayne and, and Birdman's house by the cops. We were in his mansion. <laughs> that was interesting. But uh, anyway, that was just last month. Can you share your thought process, Jason? You bastard! On when it comes to a new shoot from inspiration to final shot, I don't ever have a problem with ideas or composition. It's just the piecing it together. So really I, I see the first thing I do when I get onto a location is I take a look at it. I determine first where I want to shoot. The first thing you have to do is determine where you want to shoot before you worry about your lens. Oh, this is the lens I'm going to use. How do you know what lens you're going to use before you see the location? You don't know if you're shooting wide, tight. You don't know what you're doing. So leave yourself open. Stop closing off possibilities to your, your creative process. So go and then I, I'm going to shoot here. Okay. This is what I'm going to do now based upon uh, knowing 
the composition of the image, then I can choose the lens. And based on the lens, I can choose the light. Because if I'm shooting super wide, then I'm going to need a light that can throw light a far distance. If I'm shooting up tight, I can use a whole different set of lights. Depends if there's a lot of ambient light or if there's a lot of darkness. All of those factors go into deciding camera, uh, lens, and light. And also lens determines which light I would use as well because am I shooting a wide aperture lens? Am I shooting a 1.4? Am I shooting a Canon 11 to 24 millimeters? That's f4. Or am I shooting a 35 1.4? Or am I shooting 85? What am I doing? It also determines my modifier. Everything, guys, are dominoes. Your, your shoots have to go by dominoes. And if you can figure out that process, which I can help you do if you come to a workshop, believe me, I kick your ass. But come to a workshop and I'll help you do it, really. Or just give you take the advice I give you and go practice. Um, Ella, I have been working on a macro studio during COVID, still not done. Keep going, keep going. William Raleigh thinks I'm sex. Uh, Raleigh thinks I'm sexy. Thank you, baby boy. I know lots of people like road mics. Yeah, road mics are honestly pretty good, guys. They're they're good quality. Um, and go from there. I it has been good. Register actually. You uh, sound like Jason Lanier somehow. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Sennheiser. Yes, that's right. It is Sennheiser. Good job, guys. Good job. Uh, um, Nikon has no future. Move the mic closer. It's not a fantasy. <laughs> Is this your fantasy, Terry? <laughs> the new Canon RF lenses are so expensive. I love Terry. We have so much fun together. Terry was with me during one of the worst shoot. Not <laughs> how do I put this? He was with me during one of the when I was with a really bad person. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, the last good Nikons were D4 and DF. The D750, the D750 is a good camera. Oh, hey, you also did a shoot in a Sin City style. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Ever try Sigma 16 millimeter 141? I have not tried that. SPS is Sony Pro Services. Nikon D700 is awesome. It is, but those 12 megapixels kill me now. This pandem pandemic slowed down my paid photo gigs, so I send models running naked through the. Um, cemeteries so i spent the most of the summer <laughs> experimenting things i had not done before especially long shutter small aperture night shoots it gave me a new skill that's awesome hi jason this is danny saying i'm looking to get a 50 millimeter for my a7r3 i'm debating between the 514 and the 5518 514 all day what uh your what video gear do you use to make your youtube videos into film workshops just a9 a7 a3 r3 that's it Hi, Jason. Agree with Hanley. Canon lenses are pricey. What is your favorite portrait lens? How did you like the 135? 135, 135 is one of my favorite focal lengths. I love a 135. <clears throat> but um, yeah, that, that's that's what I love. I love 85. I mean, I love all of them. Guys, I've always told people, when you buy a lens, you should exhaust it. You should find out everything that thing, that thing can do and then move on to another lens. So it's 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 part of your experience toolkit. So you can pull from it any time that you want. But anytime I buy a new lens, I'll go out and, and just exhaust everything I think I can possibly shoot with it. And it gives me a great knowledge base to be able to pull from. Like a good example is that is a 100 millimeter STF. I didn't use that. I shot that lens when it first came out. I bought it. Um, and then I didn't use it for like three years. And then I pulled it out again because I was curious as to what it would do on a shoot. I'm like, I think, you know, let me try that 100 STF and I pull it out and shop and now I've been shooting with it more. So that knowledge base of having maximized and learned that lens was really critical. So if you're out there and you have a lens that is in your tool bag that you're not very comfortable with, that's the one you should be shooting with. Okay. Trust me on that. Um, in Jacksonville, Florida, there's an abandoned um, elementary school. I'm going to check out in a few weeks. Annie Lytle elementary. Ooh, sounds cool. Sounds really cool. Um, Jason, I like the idea of rotolites. Always consider, but the price to output always scares me off, mother freaker. What do you think is the entry point for all around use? Are they okay for daylight work? Great question. Here's what I want you guys to do. If you go to jasonlinear.com slash rotolite, this isn't a sales pitch. I have created a brand new section of my website that I'm going to announce at some point. I didn't even plan on it now. But if you go to jasonlinear.com slash rotolite, I have listed every single light that they offer, not the tiny one, the RL48, but the that thing's eight years old. But the Neo 2, the AOC Nova Pro 2, the Titan X1, the Titan X2, I've put them all in categories. 
I have put each corresponding video for each light and I've put descriptions on each and I put a photo gallery for each. And I worked really hard on this last night, which is why I'm mentioning it. If you go to the FAQ section on that, I tried to answer every question I could possibly think of. So that you guys may have regarding Rotolite. So please do me a favor, guys, check that out. And if there's something that you think it's, is, is missing on there, I even put a little form. Hey, is there a question we didn't answer? Um, fill out that form and let me know. I want to answer these questions for you. But can you get great shots with the Rotolite uh, Neo 2 uh, in uh, daytime? Um, yes, if there's cloud cover. But if, if it's really sunny outside, no. Um, AOS you can. From AOS all the way up you can. But if it's super sunny, guys, you're going to want to diffuse the light anyway. With your Whether you're using traditional strobe or you're using Rotolite. Just keep that in mind, truly. Lots of planning to prepare for a shoot. Absolutely. Would, would a project like shooting one focal length for a month interest you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading ahead. I don't know. I don't know if that would interest me. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was down in uh, Cuba and I shot the entire time there. This is two years ago. I shot the entire time on this particular trip with a Petzval lens. And that's a manual focus, old Russian lens. And I shot with a Petzval for the entire trip. And I limited myself just to the Petzval. So while that was really fun for me to be able to do it also, I mean, obviously limits me on the work that I can create. So I don't know. I don't know. William Rowell says my voice is sexy. Okay. William is a serial killer. He is going to, he's like John Wayne Gacy. I think, I think I'm going to see him like truly in a bunch of lipstick and stuff. And, and uh, he's going to kill me. If I die guys, you know who did it. Hello from Pecos. Hello. Wow. 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 Ricky, I can't afford a workshop yet. Oh guys, when I come out with the workshops for 2021, we're going to do some screaming deals. And I'm serious about that because I want to get the flow back on for everybody. So the workshops, you know, like we're 800, Depends on the workshop. They're 800, 1200, 2000. They're going to be really, really priced well because I want people to be able to get out there and start shooting again. So Nate says, I don't camera bash because everyone has their own uh, preference of gear. If you like Sony, use Sony. If you like Nikon, use Nikon. Absolutely. Jason, thank you so much for teaching. Thank you, Mike Nebula. The guys are always flirting with you. I know, right? It's never the chicks, it's always the dudes. <laughs> When Sony wouldn't provide, well, anyway, when Sony wouldn't provide sensors to Nikon anymore, the 800E was over for it. Yeah, most likely. I thought about switching to Fuji. Thoughts? If you if you think if you think that's where your heart should take you, then um, <laughs> I gotta stop reading ahead. If you think that's where it should take you, then go for it. I would just say, you know, it depends. I I, I can't take Fuji seriously because of their focus system. It's been my biggest beef with, with Fuji. Spent the summer experimenting. Yes, I did. Hi, Jason. You already <laughs> that's really funny. You already convinced me on Sony from Nikon in 2016, but I bought, but yet I bought a Nikon D750, which was a great camera until I start noticing all the focusing issues, color issues. What can I say? You should listen, my man. People searching for boudoir photography is the top photography trend on Google right now. Well, of course, they're nudes. They're nudes. It's like this dude sending me nudes. <laughs> Of course, guys, sex sells. If there's TNA, it's going to get lots of views. That's just the truth. You never hear Jason talking about Sony or Fuji. Why don't you talk to me, James? <laughs> I'm sitting right here, my man. Uh, it's like George Costanza speaking in the third person. Um, I'll talk about Fuji. Um, I, I got the what well, I got a B and H sent me Fuji gear, and I tried to use it on a shoot. Uh, we were in. Um, um, Dreamland. We did that shoot in Dreamland with Rotolite. And I pulled out the Fuji to start using it. And the focus was just missing. And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't. So if there's, I typically truly do have a lot of patience. I don't have patience for cameras that don't focus because for me, that is such a critical component. It is the main thing you have to do. It's like as, as a parent, your main job is to make sure your children are fed and safe and and good if you fail at that job it really doesn't matter what else you do as a parent so when camera companies create gear that doesn't focus well and that is their main job to do well i have a hard time backing or getting behind those brands that's the honest truth now if you're like a leica 
and you say we just flat out don't care about autofocus, that's fine. But if you provide autofocus, then up your game and do a good job. Uh, I keep a Helios 44 always mounted on my 5D. Awesome. The one for 35G Master is awesome, super sharp. I rented it for two shoots. Yeah, it's a nice lens. I think he has no good reasons to discuss Fuji, really. Uh, I currently shoot a Nikon D7. Guys, I'm not Fuji bashing either. When Fuji comes out with a camera that focuses well, I'll be all over it, and I'll do reviews on it, truly. I currently shoot a Nikon D700 thing to go into the Z5. I call myself a semi-pro uh, because I do some paid work, but it is not a job, and I do not make my living from photography. Awesome. Uh, best advice Jason ever give, uh, be reason this world is a better place because you're in it rather than the world is the worst place because you're in it. Love that message. Thank you. Um, Rotolite version one on, where did that, you're so freaking, oh my gosh, there's so many com comments. Um, holy freak. Um, cool. Now in 2020, Sony got a7C and yes, Jason, I got flashbacks from 2016. It's so freaking easy to focus. It's low light beast for photo and video. Awesome. I'll, I'll check it out. It probably had swirly bokeh. I love the 58 mil. Yeah. The part pets was pretty cool stuff. Uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm too cheap to buy, but still like to watch what you create. Thank you. Come back to Massachusetts and we can meet with, up with my buddy shooting a doc for Netflix. That sounds cool. Hattrick, send me an email. Um, unless, unless the, um, you know, unless the documentary is about dudes and lipstick and getting naked for William Rowell that I don't want to be part on. He'd love to have me on set. Let me know. Send me an email, Jason at jailpros.com. <laughs> do you ever do photo printing at your, at events? No, never. Uh, Tamron 2875 F28 Sigma. Um, cool. And now I'm having lots of fun. Good. Yeah. I dig your hat. Thank you. What do you think about Sony 20 millimeter one eight? Uh, that's all right. Uh, Sony told him, uh, good to see you back at it. Good. Got to take off. Thanks, Scott. I uh, have the Helios 44 too. Have you ever shot with it? Yes, I have. I shot with it in Dubai. Fun question. Where do you see the future of photography in the next 50 years? I look at the Sony R704 a little overkill. Oh my gosh. 50 years. Let's, let's, let's drop the zero off that. Let's talk about five years. It's the industry is changing way too long to look five decades in the future. We need it, it, the, the industry is going to be completely different in five years from now. Truly. Um, EJ says, hello. What's up, EJ, my man? What's up, baby? I'm considering the A92. Is the A9 better for the cost? Don't get the A92. They only made it for the Olympics. You can save a lot of money, and, and the A9 is a killer camera. You don't need the A92. Um, the only way to take Fuji seriously is to dump their hunting AF lenses and manual focus them. Uh, she's not concerned about us flirting. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, I love you, man. Uh, what do you think about the Tamron 24 DN28? Um, I haven't used it. If you and I kind of use Adobe, you are at a disadvantage color wise. Check out Affinity Pro or almost anything else. Good advice. Rod from Rotolite is the bomb. Yes, he is. I'll talk to you, Jason. Anyways, well, thank you. Preferences, absolutely. New to your channel, what kind of photography do you teach? All kinds, but. Uh, the vast, I say the majority is portrait photography and, um, but it's about inspiration. It's fun. It's about understanding your gear and finding your passion so you can create for yourself. That's really what it's about. Do you recommend gear for each of your workshops? Yes, I do. In fact, people who sign up for the workshops or even ahead of the workshops, we will give you advice on the gear that we recommend to get the most out of it. It doesn't need to be a ton of it though. It really doesn't. Guys, because if, as long as you have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera that has interchangeable lenses, you can learn how to do photography. Now somebody's gonna argue with me and they're gonna say that the, there's some uh, Panasonic $150 ca dollar camera out there or whatever, that's the best thing since sliced bread. And, but no, you need to have certain amount of gear to be able to learn certain things that's just a freaking truth i haven't there's just no other way to put it you think the focus is bad on the x series g is worse they would be hell with portraits dag can you can't afford an a9 and a7r4 wow um yeah sure um where are we at mother freakers autofocus is the biggest area where manufacturers have a tendency to cut corners even with all the hype and hundreds of points <laughs> I do not doubt it. If Mark says something about ca cameras, guys, believe him. The guy knows more than freaking Yoda. I can focus my M faster than a Fuji can focus. <laughs> I'm not here to bash Fuji. I'm really not. Fuji has some fun cameras, but 
I just, I just need their, their autofocus to be better for me to really get into it. Thanks again for all of your content over the years. You rock. Thank you. Uh, DF or D4 for the Nikon to own 7,200 is a junker. You guys and your stuff tonight. When is your Fuji? Shoot? When was your Fuji shoot? It was, it was X-T3 that I shot. Yeah. It was the X-T3 that I shot. That's what I shot. Not, not a huge fan. Um, why do you think, what, why do you think about photo editing with a wake? Oh, I don't use a Wacom tablet. Rami, Ruman, what's up, Jason? What's up, baby boy? Could you please review Sigma 8514 for Sony E? Yeah, why not? What's cracking, yo? What's up, Art? Best flash system for Sony on a budget. Godox V1S, 8200 Pro with X2 trigger killer combo for Sony system. Yeah, I wouldn't be so much about, <laughs> I'm reading ahead. I wouldn't be so much about the, the V1S, but the 8200 um, is a good starter flash. Um, a nine or R three. Oh, depends. But I mean, oof, probably R three when I buy the Nikon. That's tough though. That, those are both crazy good cameras. When I buy the Nikon Z five, what native lens am I better to buy rather than the kit lens? Depends on what your work is. Are you portrait photographer, landscape photographer, sports photographer guys? When you ask questions about gear, you have to clearly define what it is that you do because the answers are different depending on what you do. What do you think about A-frame? Um, I think they're good for building houses. <laughs> what up, bros? <laughs> Can you tell me about the ISOs? I'm a camera dummy. Love what you do for everyone. You're awesome. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> I enjoy these. These are fun. Um, ISOs is simple. I mean, you raise it to raise your ambient lighting. When people see my videos and like, damn, you shot at a thousand ISO, that light must not be, um, oh my God. That light, let me finish that thought. That light must not be bright. This right here, right now, is the most perfect example of this lesson. So let me just impart this to you. My camera is shooting at f2.8, so I don't move out of focus too much. The A9 is at f2.8 right now. It's at 1 50th of a second, and it is at, um, so it's pretty slow. 1 50th of a second, f2.8, and it is at 1,000 ISO. So if you're looking at this, you're like, well, geez, come on, stay in focus. I just mentioned you, A9. So if it's at F2.8, then, um, and it's, at, you know, and I have light, then why do I shoot at 1,000 ISO? I shoot at 1,000 ISO because, guys, the 1,000 ISO brings up this ambient. So everything you see behind me is for the ISO, right? And the light is for me. So the light is on um, 2%, like I said earlier. That's the reason for all of this. So when you're when you're doing your lighting, guys, stop being scared of ISO. Is this does this look bad? No. And this is cameras three years old. So come on, guys. Um, these lips are for you, Terry. Just for you, my little baby boy. I think you'd be great with drone photography. Thoughts? I drone photography could be great. I I, I got into it a little bit. I bought the Mavic Pro or something. And I took it to Hawaii, started messing around with my boys with it. We went to an abandoned sugar cane factory. And then my dumbass flew <laughs> flew the drone into a huge abandoned uh, factory and crashed it. So that was the extent of my drone career. Um, I think you'd be great with, oh, okay. Um, rumor has it Canon will have an EOS R5S. How do you like the R5? I haven't played with it yet. Um, I don't know English. I always watch it your, with subtitles. Just came in to say hi. Thank you. Thank you. Can't learn depth of field on a two-third sensor. Yeah, that's true to that. During COVID, we got a lot of downtime. Have you gotten any got any projects you're working on that you can share? Oh, I'm I'm shooting like a madman. I mean, just wait till you see what we're creating coming up here. We're gonna be doing some RGB flash videos. That's gonna be really fun. So uh, new gears on the way and we're going to be creating some really cool stuff from you guys, but I have so much content to release. Um, I can't wait. Best led light setup aperture MC. No, it is not. No, it is not. I have an a seven R two, but I need recommendations on the best three portrait lenses to buy help. Uh, 85 G master 50 Sony's ice. 
Um, or you could get the 85 Tamron because it's a lot cheaper and it's pretty much the same thing as his ice badass. It really is like truly the same thing. And then I get a 35. There's a $150 Panasonic that is actually better than sliced bread. How did you know? I, exactly. Yes, Mark, you are Yoda. You need an SLR to learn photography, film or digital. You can't, you, you, you don't need a DSLR to learn photography. William, you are so damn old. <laughs> It's about lighting. <laughs> it is about lighting. Uh, what camera system are you using to stream A9? It's impossible. The GFX 100 has bad autofocus. A7C thoughts. Haven't played with it yet. Can't wait to see you back in Mass. Haven't even asked for it. You got one freebie to make up. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I can't wait to get back. Gun to the head. Daytime shoot. Godox 82600 or Rotoline Over Pro 2. Quick. Oh, AP2. Nova Pro 2. Um, you should start critiquing Insta accounts live. Okay, send me your Insta account. That sounds funny. Um, what TV series are you watching currently? I just started Deadlands. Just started Deadlands. Um, what's up, Papa? So when you switch into Canon, oh, says the Nikon guy. Um, sometime. I don't know if I'll ever switch, but um, photography. Photos is Greek for light. Yes, it is. Uh, graphy or graphic means drawing for yes it is oh dang a9 slipping out of focus william rao do you translate greek <laughs> that's a good that's a good one man hey jason i know you love traveling so go to country georgia when you have chance it's amazing but don't go out there if you are on diet food is just out of this world we'll see i'd love to be there I think your balance is awfully warm right now. No, I'm still blushing from all the nude shots you guys are sending me. Crispy bro is very crispy. Um, how do you feel about shooting the Grand Canyon? I love it. What recommendations do you have to do something unique? As I do landscape and action photography right now, but I just have issues with the Grand Canyon. What are your issues? And I'm laughing not at your question. I'm laughing because I'm reading ahead. But um, let me know. Uh, <laughs> let me know what your issues are. Remember, even 4K is only 8 uh, megapixels per frame. You can hide a lot, a ton of image quality issues in the down sample. Yep. With Panasonic's bad focus, I wouldn't be caught dead shooting with that mechanical a-hole. <laughs> when you're adjusting ISO and aperture for your flash, and I also take care of the overall brightness, then what does the aperture control for flash? Aperture is controlling your depth of field, but it's controlling how much. See, the lower your app, the wider your aperture, the lower you can lower, the more you can lower your ISO. That's where aperture really comes into play. Nikon is coming out with a new model, the Chapter Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, Chapter 13 is bankruptcy. Thank you, Jason. Love and respect. Jason, <laughs> you guys are freaking funny tonight, dude. Um, Jason, next time you drive by Bakersfield, call me. Um, my family will cook you a great Mexican meal. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, RGB is the modern version of what will become selective color. You think so? I don't think so. It depends on what you're doing. Tamron saves money. Yes, it does. Some of us learned with rangefinders. True. Looking forward to it. I love RGB. Just made six do-it-yourself six-foot quasar lights. Perfect. 24 or 28 prime on Sony for street. Ooh. 28. Tamron makes an 85, 18, or 14. I think it's a 18. Well, the one that's a, like the baddest is a 18. Cam Wheeler still kind of visit on the weekend. Love your fake skies. Yep. I just wanted to stop in and say hi to your buddy. Uh, hi to you, buddy. Wishing you an amazing 2021. Glad to see you found your mojo again. Oh, it's it's all the way back and better before, better than before. Darren, do you try? Okay. Tamron does not make an 85. What? Tamron makes an 85. Am I crazy? Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm reading the comments. Yeah, absolutely they do. Jason, please test the XT3 with the new firmware update. Uh, we'll see. Um, yes, you don't need an SLR to learn photography, but it's probably the least expensive way to learn. No, it's not. Get an A6000. Get a used one for like 300 bucks. I'm still throwing down my A7 II. Now that thing's an old mother freaker. And I have an A6000 and I can find my way around them pretty easily. I'm holding out for the new Sony rumored release. Do you think it's worth the wait or snag an A7 III? No, I just get a 7 III. He may be lurking, never know. 
Looking good, Jason. Thank you, Ken. You're saying the Massachusetts graveyard shoot was so cool. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one where we did. Um, come on. That's the. <laughs> Hello, mother freaker. That's the one where we did where we were in the cemetery, and then they're like, "Hey, what are you guys doing here?" Uh, I do. I need to check out Huey uh, Halloween. Show yourself, Uncle Fester. Mini buns. He is too busy reinventing magnetism. To, okay. Um, can't we just make this live chat all about me? Exactly. Have you shot the 3518 full frame? Ooh, no, I haven't. Mark Mars will know the answer from my Tamron lens questions. Yes, he will. He is Yoda. He is, he is lens Yoda. Got it. Gotcha. I thought it was a Sony E-mount lens. Jason, one quick question, you little bastard. If you were starting your wedding photography business from scratch today, would you still choose Sony? Yes. Yeah, I would. Uh, <laughs> the Canon mirrorless is sexy. I'm not going to lie. It is, it is sexy. Um, uh, that 2870 lens from Canon and that F2 has almost made me want to switch. So good question. Um, Jason looking like a retired detective. <laughs> is that Mark from Tamron? Yes, it is. Is 24 millimeter Sony G master a good portrait lens? I don't have the money at the moment to upgrade. I want to start doing portraits. Um, a good portrait lens. Um, okay. If you, if you look up my video, I did portraits with the Sony 24 millimeter. If you love wide angle portraits, yes. But if you want that to be your primary portrait lens, I would not recommend that as your primary portrait lens. If you don't have an 85, 50, 35, then get those before getting a 24. Um, why don't more people understand cross lighting? I don't know. It's like cross training. People just don't get it. Um, hey, I talked to you here in Denver. Greetings. <laughs> you guys are making your own little love connections here. What's a good upgrade from an A6000 A budget? What's your budget? How much you have? I could tell you it could be a, a A92, but if you only have 500 bucks. I learned that lesson, guys, years ago when I would do a consultation with a wedding couple, and I would I would do everything that they taught us to do in online blogs and blah, blah, blah. I'll get to know them and hear their love story, and I'd be 35 minutes in, and then I'd start find, finally fishing around about money, and then they're like, oh, our budget's 500 bucks. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I just wasted 45 minutes talking to this person and I hear, heard this this lovely love story about somebody that I'm never going to meet. Dumb. So I took that same, now I, I'm talking money with a bride and groom five minutes, easy, five minutes into the conversation. Second thing is now I apply that. So when people ask me lens or camera questions at workshops and other places, I would say, what do you shoot and how much money do you have? And that really matters. Um, the, that A9 needs a little bit more light to help the focus system at 2.8 drop the one eight or increase the light bra. Thank you. Hat trick. Good to see you. you see you, but off to sleep. Oh, okay. Got my 6,000 for 75 bucks. Wow. That's cool. Who writes up your contracts for shooting clients models and who do you use for insurance? Um, I years ago got legal advice for writing up those contracts and I still use them for insurance. Um, I use State Farm. I use an Icon D3000. What camera would you suggest for an upgrade? Sony. Depends on your money, but I, I'd go Sony or Canon. 28 is a great for landscape portraits. Yeah, it can be good. Sent you something more safe for work live feedback, please. T Taylor, you're such a little bitch. <laughs> Sony A7R3 or... What is probably like a, a, a selfie of him nude or something. Um, where What do we got going on? All right, guys, you want to see Taylor's shots? All right, here's Taylor's first shot. What do you guys think? Here's his second shot. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Don't cut off the wings um, and don't cut off her hand. Raise that wing open. Um, and if you look at the exposure, the inside of the wings is more, it has a higher level of exposure versus the outside of the wings. 
So uh, I would take a look at that. And if you make some critical decisions when you're shooting of um, uh, shooting horizontally versus vertically, it'll make a difference. And if you look at the second picture, that's a tight shot. You cut off her right hand and then there's a halo around her head where you've dropped the exposure on the sky in post and you've raised the exposure in post on her on her foreground. So I would say what you need to do is use more lighting. Um, um, and this would be a perfect shoot for an Innova Pro 2. There you go. Um, but great stuff. I like the uh, direction that you're taking with your images. Sony A7R2, A7 III, uh, a Spanish photographer told me to throw away my A7R3. He's stupid. Don't believe him. Um, R3 all the way. Um, seems like I do not, I just do not get the drama. I would like, I would love to imagine and see what is in my mind. The output is flat. I shoot the Sony G Master 20 at 281635 on the A7R4. Should I change a uh, I mean, outside of the the drama, you know, R4, as I should say, outside of the focus, um, I think your problem is probably your lens. Your, your lens is not – I can you make a 1635 dramatic? Yes, you can, but it, 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 unless you're really experienced, wide-angle portraits are not easy, guys. Um, I had a piece of advice way back in my career that somebody said, if your shots aren't good enough, they're not tight enough. And really what that's telling people is when you're learning photography, see, the wider angle you shoot, the more you have to worry about. You have to worry about distortion. You have to worry about your composition. But when you shoot tight, that's why so many people love a 70 to 200. It's, if you have a reasonable knowledge base on, on how to use cameras and aperture and the exposure triangle and ISO and shutter speed, and if there's reasonably good lighting, the 7200 is going to yield a really pretty result for the most part. So when you, or an 85, that's why 85s are, a lot of the favorite lenses of photographers are favorites because they typically lend better shots without as much effort. That's the reality. So the wider angle portraiture that you attempt to do is going to be more difficult. So if you're still learning, I would steer clear of wide angle portraiture and go more towards tighter. Um, 500 is my purchase. Choose, by the way, 85. Uh, um, 500 maybe is your budget. Between an 85 and a 50 millimeter, I do 85. Still a Patreon. Awesome. Um, he told you to throw it away. Okay. <laughs> Where can we send photos? Well, oh my gosh, too many questions. No, not too many. Guys, I won't do this all the time, but if you want to send me pictures, send me some good ones, some funny ones, like the ones that this dude sent me. They're cracking me up. Uh, you can send them to Jason at jailpros.com. I will not edit. I will not critique these post the live stream. I will not send you a write up. Um, not because I got, don't love you guys, but I can't. It, I get overwhelmed with the amount, and then people get their feelings hurt. Uh, over the years, it's insane what people get their feelings hurt over. I remember. Um, Somebody, I was at a, I was at WPPI and somebody said, came up to me and they said, Hey, can I, um, record a video of you? They were a fan. And I said, sure. And so we were, they recorded it like a video on their phone and then they posted it to their Instagram and they tagged me. Well, I got a nasty message from this person and this happens a lot. I got a nasty message from this person a week later and they said, you're such an arrogant jerk. And I'm like, what did I do? And they said, I posted it. I tagged you and you didn't, you didn't have the courtesy to come on and like it and comment. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I didn't know that agreeing to do a video with you meant that I was agreeing to follow your social media and so on and so forth. And, and I didn't do it to spite her guys. I just, and I don't say this to brag. I'm just saying it's the truth. When you have hundreds of thousands of followers over all my platforms, a half million followers, your phone is constantly lit. And so of notifications and so on and so forth. So uh, guys, I have like 700 videos on YouTube. Do you know how many comments come in a day? So in other words, I don't see them. So if, if you send me a picture right now and I say, I'll critique it, please don't get your feelings hurt. If I can't, um, please don't get your feelings hurt that I won't critique it later. And if you ask me to, um, I'm just telling you I won't. So let's just set in expectations and, and um, having a good time. Um, all I have is 24 millimeter. Unfortunately, with this pandemic, I don't have the money to get a more ideal focal length. You can still do cool stuff with it, but I'm just saying, um, 
that's it's going to be your best bet. What did you do in the, the hospitality industry? I was mostly a rooms guy. I did do food and beverage, but I was mostly a rooms guy, operations, uh, general manager, director of front office, director of rooms, director of operations, um, director of housekeeping. But photography is better. My favorite shot of yours are really hot chicks in old buildings. Yeah, those aren't too shabby, right? He'll be at least wearing a hat for you. <laughs> exactly. What medium format would you use for large landscapes? A7R4. <laughs> um, no cuts on joints. Yep. Best camera under 400. Any suggestions? Uh, A6000. Don't bore. Don't bo yeah, exactly. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for all the years of information and entertainment. Santa Maria de Guadalupe. You're welcome, my man. Uh, only problem is, okay. Uh, 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 um, I love my Sony, but had a friend who has been a Canon shooter for years ask me last month about switching to Sony. I told her at this point, I, I would really probably go to the Canon R5 today. Yeah. And if you already are Canon person, guys, I would stay with Canon. Um, thank you, my man. I truly appreciate that. I truly hope to cross paths with you one day, or do you offer payment plans for your workshops? I do offer payment plans for the workshops. So guys, um, I'm here for you. I truly mean that. Yes, I make a living off of, Part of my living is made off of doing workshops, but as you can see, I'm still, I'm still, still here, and my workshops have been shut down for nine months. So, um, when I want the workshops, when I say I want the workshops to work for all of you, I truly mean it. Um, a lens that pops and is high situation out of the gate, a lens that blows in post. Yep. Um, I've always told you you're the best. Thank you. If you shoot a 17 year old model with the Fuji, by the time it locked focus, it would be legal. <laughs> I can't wait for Jason to join the Netflix staff and become a master of light with lighting the scene. Everybody needs a cinematographer. We need to meet with David Santo in Boston. You think I'm kidding, Hattrick? I'll be out there in a week. I'm not kidding. That's the way I work. People are surprised. When a good opportunity comes, I move. So if you got something fun, Jason at jailpros.com. Send it to me. I'll be all over that. Like white on rice. I love my 78100 Tamron. It's a good, it's a really great lens. Zoom versus Prime, the debate continues. Nope, there's different for each one. <laughs> Colorado, she's already legal. <laughs> I love my 85, but I also love a good wide like the 20, to, so do I. Um, wide angle is 10 times more challenging. Yep, Bill Trox 85 millimeter, cool. Love from India. Love back to you, baby boy. Um, should have told that guy, give me 2000 and I'll throw it away. Exactly. Somebody pissed me off when I shot all the company photos with the 50. <laughs> that is so funny, man. That is great. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I got a Sony A7R4. It sucks because... <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious i was on pace to, to my 85 but this covid ruined everything yeah i noticed the distortion yeah please uh all right please rip feelings hurt please rip my instagram um cut to the pictures i can help you update your broadcasting section of your stream i bet you can and i would appreciate that i am understanding you recommend the 70 center for landscape in order to get closer and drama um not for landscape no now you could in some circumstances yes but traditionally no um just don't get too close to that 24 exactly uh what's the reality between r5 and r3 i haven't shot with r5 i don't know what do your workshops cost it depends usually anywhere from 800 to 2000 just depends i always been into photography but they're gonna we're gonna come out with deals guys much cheaper to start 2021 whenever it releases because i want to get all of us back going again I always have been into photography, but always wasn't confident to actually do it. What is the best camera for a beginner? I'll be more into portrait photography. I kind of do it with my phone. Um, depends on your price. I, I'm going to still say the A6000. Guys, get all of your experience on something like an A6000 and then go from there. It, it really is a big difference. Oh, uh oh, somebody else sent a picture. Oh, I'm getting lots of pictures. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. What do we got? All right. So this is a picture by Chris Ortiz. 
I like the colors in the image. I like the uh, I I like the um, the fact that you used um, uh, props and that you use coloring and, and glitter and stuff to to accent the shots. Be careful on cutting off elbows and limbs, um, and um, and and work with the story. So, what is the story of the shot? Would be my question. So, when you're looking at that, what is what is that story that you're trying to convey um, with this image? Um, and I also think it could be um, it could be interesting if she was looking at the shot. Um, and now I've been asked to to look at an Instagram. This is Tim Abel. Um, yeah, great skies. Great skies. You're exposing for your skies very nicely. Um, and you know, I'm a sucker for skies. You have a lot of drama, drama in your shots. A lot of, you, you're really doing a good job on your exposure with the skies. Um, and that seems to be your forte. So, um, great stuff, brother. I'd switch some of this. Like I would switch this to a black and white. Great stuff. Um, Oh my gosh. Right. I was always into photography, but wasn't confident to actually do it. Was the, okay. Um, the A3, R3 doesn't catch fire when you use it. Send a pic. Uh, okay. Let's go shoot together. Promise. I promise I won't make you put on lipstick. No, I'm worried that you're going to be wearing lipstick, William. Uh, uh, knowing nothing whatsoever about photography. I saw your videos and you inspired me to purchase in the R3. Spent the last year learning photography. Just loving it. I want to say thank you. Awesome. Keep it simple, baby. Uh, Andrew Herman, Jason, we need to get a workshop set up for you during WPPI week. I know many good, many photocs that are craving something to do and the rumors that WPPI will be going to an online platform. It will because it sucked. It sucked. And it's going to be virtual like Imaging USA. And guys, that's going to suck big time. Pelotas. <laughs> it's going to suck. And if you don't know what pelotas means, just put it in Google and you'll find out. It's Spanish, but it sucks. This virtual stuff sucks. Nothing like being in person, baby. Um, yeah, no, I, I'll go and shoot in, in, in Vegas with or without WPPI, whatever. Canon is like old people playing at bingo and can't go digital. <laughs> Mark, I do a lot of panoramic work with the 70 to 200 or 100 to 400. It's true. Compression rules. Compression is pretty awesome. Jason, it is... Jason's in the Illuminati. That's why his skies and flash photography is so good. There's truth to that. There's truth. I'm also a Mason, um, a Jew, a Mormon. Um, let's, what, what the hell? I'm a Catholic too. And I'm Muslim. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I watched the movie Devil's Ass. <laughs> I watched the movie Devil's Ass and you were talking about, I'll never be the same again. <laughs> Yeah, for those who don't know, Devil's Acid is the video that I referenced. I was watching a movie um, while I was editing. I'm like, holy crap, I know that place. And the place was a place that I had shot, and it's a prison. And I talk all about this in the podcast. So jasonlinear.com slash podcast. Guys, you got to listen to the podcast. It's a riot. But, um, yeah, Devil's Acid, it's about this little guy. And when I say little guy, I do mean a little guy, like Tyrion in Game of Thrones. <laughs> And he is an absolute jerk and he plays pranks on people and then he gets everybody high on acid. It is a B horror movie from, from heaven. It's amazing. What do I think of an icon D 7,200? I think it's, it was a good camera at one point in time. And uh, Mark Morris just followed me. Hey Mark, you got to send me your <laughs> Mark. It's going to kick my ass. Mark, you got to <laughs> Mark text me your Instagram. I, th I thought I followed it, but then I couldn't find it the other day. And I'm like, where's Mark? So if I haven't followed you, Mark, send it to me. Um, am I rocking an iPhone six plus now? Right now I have the eight plus great session, Jason. Uh, keep it up. If you ever visit Palm desert, love to go to Joshua tree with you and learn even night photography, consider a workshop for night photography. So amazing out there. I know I absolutely love Joshua tree. It's amazing for astrophotography. After the business shutdowns in California due to COVID, how do you feel about Governor Newsom's hypocrisy and not following his own rules? Have you thought about moving to, from California? Yeah, Republican or Democrat aside, any government official who says one thing and does another, and I, oh, that's all of them. Okay, that's fine. But when you find out they did it, 
So for people who don't know, Newsom has put really restrictive, you know, a lot of restrictions here on us in California. And then he's caught out having birthday parties and eating and um, indoor restaurants, no masks and no social distancing and everything. It's, it makes it makes me furious. When anybody from Republican or Democrat state does it, it makes me furious. Um, I feel like politicians in general, regardless of political persuasion, I've told you guys I don't go that route because there are people on both sides of the aisle that I truly love. So, And you don't come on here to hear if I'm a Republican or Democrat. You come on here to hear about photography and life. So, But regardless of the political persuasion, anybody who's out there telling us to do one thing and forcing us to do it, but then they do the other, yeah, that pisses me off. So Newsom can bite my uh, pelotas. Um, how do you uh, how do you send pictures? People are sending in my email, jason at showpros.com. I probably shouldn't be announcing this. I have more than 30 lenses, but I never take one beautiful photo. Yeah, less lenses, more picture taking, more education. What is your advice for creating stock that will sell on stock sites? Look at what's needed. Don't pay for a bad experience. Yep. I wonder if Jason could take an old camera and make it look as good as this A7R3. Depends on what the old camera is. When it sucks, I'm thankful for my ch chapstick. <laughs> Terry. Terry is a friend, and he sent me for Christmas. I posted a picture of me going like this, and in, 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 this is like three years ago. And for Christmas, he sent me like a whole bag of candy-flavored chapstick. It was hilarious. Uh, any plans on coming to Louisville, Kentucky in the near future? I love Louisville. I love Louisville. Louisville, Louisville, Louisville. Um, I realized you're probably getting a lot of pictures sent to you, but I sent you a shot from a Halloween shoot I did. If you get a chance, could you check it out? I'll see what I can do. Um, <laughs> sorry, Mark. Yeah, check my check my train out too. Anza Borrego is awesome. I love Anza Borrego. It's beautiful. I've been there a lot, shot there a lot. It's beautiful. Jason, I'm in SoCal. Oh, SoCal's great. I love that. Um. It's because that governor is is the is in the Illuminati. Yeah, we actually attend the same meetings. Uh, everybody is mad out here. Well, there's a lot of crazy people everywhere. French laundry horse. <laughs> you said it straight up about the political hypocrisy. Absolutely. I think polit politicians are the new, are the American version of royalty. I really believe that. I really do. And it's disgusting. I'm ne every, uh, Growing up, I always looked at like, people in the UK and I have a lot of friends and followers in the UK, but I'm like, I don't get this whole royalty thing. Why do you worship these people? Well, now we got that version over here in the States, you know, with politicians and celebrities. So they can, they can just kiss off for reals. Um, would you ever do a one-on-one -on -one coaching during a model shoot? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for AJ Cali, sounds like DJ Khaled. What do you think of Skillshare? Um, they've 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 tried to get me to join them a bunch of times, but I'm not sure on that. Thanks for your wisdom. Got to run. Thanks, brother. Sushun in Kiwi Land. I'd love that. I used the same Z, three Zeiss for about eighty thousand shots. Don't need a bunch. Yeah. What email address of yours do you want us to send photos to? Scott Porter's got to go. See you later, Scott. I have one lens. You can send them to Jason at JoePros.com, but I'm only going to do a few guys, and I'm only going to do them on this live stream. Please, if you hit me up afterwards, don't be offended if when I – not if, but when I don't do it. And they want us to surf. Yep. Do you think cell phones will replace cameras someday? No, not entirely. There will always be more of a pro version that won't – no. There's just some laws of physics that are at play with lenses and such that require uh, – certain elements to be in place. Have you done instructional videos for creative life skills for Adorama? Um, no, because that dips into what I do. So I have to be very careful with, um, I have to be very careful with that. Uh, Mark says in regards to cell phones, they decimated the sub 400 compact camera. Oh, they did. And, if, and camera phones have had an enormous impact. I mean, Sony sells Canon cells, Nikon cells. I mean, they are way down, way down. So there's a lot of things that go into it. I think market saturation with mirrorless. I think um, mistakes by the camera companies. And I think the advancement of camera phones has caused a lot of that. What's your method for training someone who knows nothing about photography? Where do you have them start? And what does it really take to get your to your level? Oh, that's a great question. 
Um, if, if my training method, and I'm not trying to be funny, I'm, I'm much more like Mr. Miyagi and Daniel San and Karate Kid. Like I really, I'm going to make you actually learn stuff and make and help have you understand the whys and the hows and, and the muscle memory for everything that you do, because that's what's going to make you a really great photographer. Um, now there are some people, guys. No matter how much I train, I can't be Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. Um, so just understand that everyone has ceilings. Everyone has a, a certain place they can go. I have ceilings, but you have to find what your ceiling is. And, and if you keep going, I honestly believe you'll really never find it because there's always more that we can do. So, um, but could, could people get to a pro level? Absolutely. Absolutely. But first it's about understanding technical and then marrying your technical with your creative. That's how you do it. Um, <clears throat> Which politicians are like diapers that both should be changed frequently and for the same reason. I couldn't agree more. I hate them. Lightroom's still the way to go. For me, it is. If Jason was on Skillshare, the server would crash. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure. Yeah, but it would. All, yeah, but but kind of like camera phones. I mean, I got to be careful of my business. Um, they should do two terms, one in Washington, <laughs> one in jail. Uh, Spokane workshop over Seattle, please. And thank you. The Nikon shooters should switch. What's the best way to reach you for that one-on-one? -on -one? Jason at jlpros.com. How's M? I love seeing the two of you work together. Maddie too. Emily and Maddie are both doing great. For those who don't know, uh, they have both, um, uh, well, maybe not both. I'll speak specifically. Maddie's retired from modeling. Maddie is, um, uh, and it's funny because when Maddie and I um, work together, um, I really advocated her. I said, you got to have something after modeling because eventually modeling ends. And so when she and I ended our, our run together, um, I helped her get Sony gear um, and got her started. And now Maddie has started her own Instagram or a while ago. But I mean, she, she announced just, I think last week that she's retiring from modeling. And so that's what she's off to now. And she's, I think she told me last, she's, she was in the Netherlands and she's going to somewhere South America, I think. Anyway, Emily, Emily's doing fantastic. Emily is, is you guys know, I adore Emily. She's beautiful. She's just absolutely, uh, she's, she's a special person. Um, but she is, uh, we stopped working together in July and, um, and I mean, guys, it's COVID, it's everything else. And she is a speech, speech pathologist. She has a master's degree. She's doing fantastic. And, um, and she's living her life and, and she's living a really good one. And I'm very proud of her. Very proud of both those ladies. What study material would you recommend? Um, well, since you asked, I'd recommend watching my videos, going on to Patreon and learning from me online and then going out and doing it truly. That's what I would recommend. Wax on, wax off. You got that right, baby. What are you What are you recommending, Andrew? Okay. Titan one for first flash. Yep. I'm going to do it. You should do it. It's awesome. Just shoot what you like. Yep. I'd max out a credit card for a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Bring it on, baby boy. Let's do it. <laughs> you guys, guys, I'm not joking about this stuff. This is how this stuff happens. When you guys are like, hey, will you come out here? If, you, if, if there's something interesting to me, like, hey, come out here and start lighting for Netflix. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like fun. I could do that. And, or if you're like, hey, let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. I will really do this stuff. I'm giving you my, my straight email, not like some random email. This is my email. So send me an email. If you guys want to do something, let me know. Game on, baby boy. I went to a Fuji appearance with a Leica hat on. <laughs> and the Fuji rep gave me a cold shoulder. It was an accident. That's awesome. Thanks for the chats tonight, Jason. I'll reach out. Thanks. Don't be shutter happy. Absolutely. How do you get to being able to shoot at sports events like NFL games and stuff and you feel like you can compete with your photography with – what competitions would you recommend? Competitions are tough because competitions are just, for the most part, favoritism games. Um, and uh, you got to, you got to, uh, competitions can be tough nowadays. Competitions are about one thing and that's just making money. That's all they're about. Um, yeah, they give you a nice pat on the back, but competitions have changed so much since I've been in the industry. Now they're really about just making money. Um, and you're probably going to see them change even more because uh, a company like Expo or Emerald, what are they? Emerald Events that does WPPI and Photo Plus, they would always hold huge competitions. Um, and now they're losing their 
expo income, they're probably going to be very desperate for competition income. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, and how do you get to be able to get to a point like that, guys? You make friends in the in industry, you network, and you get you get good. Sadly, there are way too many people out there that never pick up a photography book. I probably read 100 plus, have had no experience, but pick up any DSLR and suddenly they are professional. Yeah, well, I've never read a book on photography and I never will. But um, I think I'd read a book on, on a biography on a photographer, but like that would probably be it. Studying other photographers, yes. I mean, I, I guess nowadays, you know, we're doing so much more on the internet that, you know, we'll look stuff up. But, but, um, I do agree that people need to put more into their craft than just, hey, I'm here now. You know what I mean? Um, there's a great book by the Ammonite Press called Understanding Exposure. I believe everyone should own it. <laughs> well, Yoda has spoken. <laughs> Can't put a price on training. Exactly. I've been watching your videos and honestly have improved on my photography. Thank you. Do you do macro? I would take some advices. Yes, I do do macro lens I work. I do, you know, the majority of my macro work has primarily been at weddings and such. <sighs> Come back to Annapolis. I would love to. I love that place. I kind of lost, uh, where are we at? I lost a love of photography re recently as well. Looking for my mojo again. Thanks for your recent podcast. I felt every word of it. Cool. Guys, check out those podcasts. I'm telling you, I am straight up talking to you like we're sitting in the same room. They're, they're good. And they're really meant to. So, uh, you know, be a place where we can have a one-on-one -on -one chat. Jeff Jeter, what's up, baby? What's up, my chocolate thunder? What's up, baby boy? <laughs> I do one-on-ones for <laughs> a buck five and a Yoohoo. <laughs> do they even make Yoohoo's anymore? What the hell are you doing up so late? It's not that late. It's not that late. I'm in California, baby. It's 940. Um, honestly, most of the competition I see aren't being judged by people that know what they're talking about. There's truth to that. Whatever happened to La Lunetta? Oh, that's Maddie. She's uh, like I just got done saying she's retired from from photography, from modeling. Hi, Mr. Learner. Quick questions for Neo2. What is your rec recommendation modifier? Uh, I'd say the Illum uh, the Illuminator. Competition best flash picture approved by yourself gets a paid flight to that one on that one on one photo competition. Do it, Jason. I know what tax bracket you're in and I'm competitive. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to pay for your flight so I can teach you. How does that work? You on this wonderful thing of COVID, you must be doing some crazy ass drugs. Um, all right, man, I got to run. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks for the nudes. What music instruments do you play? Uh, I play the trombone, but I really, I can sit down and jam at the photographer at the uh, piano. The famous photographer course books, big bound, big hard bound. If you can find them, that's how I learned. Awesome. Do you know if the new Nikon Z72 works well? I do not. Jason, you're the man. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Kenny. Um, would you do some videos on posing? I might. I might. I teach a lot of the, the workshops, but I could do some. Jason, watch the movie about Neil Zla's Hours Life. That's one of my favorite photographers. Okay. For macro 92.8 or 52.8.90. Jason, uh, please keep talking. My girlfriend Jules is needing attention and I don't want to give it, <laughs> give it like I said, training. <laughs> Mr. Leonard, you inspired me to switch to mirrorless and I thank you. Thank you. It's a strawberry you who it probably is. They used to have you who's here in Colorado, but they, but they don't now. Gross. Jason, I sent you a boudoir selfie. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Jeff is lying. He didn't send me crap. Um, so does the person with the best jokes in the chat get a free course from you? No, they do not. Do you know if the new Nikon Z7 II works well with the F-mount lenses with the adapter? I don't. I answered that already. Sorry. Jason, I enjoyed M's funny wit and miss seeing, will miss seeing her. Do you have a replacement travel model? I'm tuning in late and sorry. No, like I said... Um, Guys, every muse that I've had has brought something unique. And the last two muses I've had, the last two have been Maddie and, and Emily. And every one of them brings something unique. They bring something unique to uh, my life, to my work, to the YouTube channel, and to you guys. Um, and so I miss all of them for different reasons. And I love all of them for different reasons. Um, 
do I have a replacement yet? No, I am holding off on a replacement until really we understand the, the landscape. I don't want to hire somebody as of right now and bring them in. And then, um, you know, I mean, when COVID first started, guys, we thought this was going to last two months, two weeks. Now it's been 10 months. So until we get some further clarity on the future, I'm not going to bring in another model. But I do have models that are guest starring, if you will. Um, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I really am. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Do you know if the new Nikon Z7? Okay. Uh, were you do in life? What do you what you do in life? I am a photographer. Uh, Mark Morris says the Nikon Z7 II works very well with the FT, FTZ adapter and the vast majority of modern Nikon amount. Uh, oh, cool. Good insight, Mark. How about 30s theme photo shoot where fedoras rained? Yeah, that'd be hell. That'd be that'd be awesome. Uh, Merry Christmas, Jason. I love your content. Thank you, Terry. You know I love you. Does a flash allow you to shoot landscapes in harsh light conditions? Yes, but you should still modify that light, guys. You should still modify light. People really um, still don't grasp that. Will you be selling CDs of all your photography knowledge? Do people even, do they make CDs anymore? I don't think so. Is it JL Pros or Geo Pros? <laughs> JL Pros. To print large and make posters, what is a good size to capture an image with? Um at least I'd I mean, guys, I've, I've printed large on a 12 megapixel, but really when you want to get into the better stuff, I'd go 24. I know macro lens for my, my mirrorless setup. What do you recommend for an affordable landscape lens? Oh, gosh. Probably 1635 Zeiss, but that's not really affordable. Depends on much, how much money you have, guys. Next time, bazooka bubble gum. Exactly. Where's the best rotolite to get on a budget? Or what's... I'd say the best all around is the AOS for budget and for power. Um, it's called an audiobook, yeah. But if you guys go to jasonlinear.com slash rotolite, you can see all the new stuff I've made on the rotolite page. If you go to rotolite.com slash uh, new, Terry sending me nudes now. <laughs> if you go to rotolite.com slash Jason offers, you guys can see all the deals on rotolites uh, and go from there. R4 or the R5. Uh, A7R4 or R5, it depends. That just depends on the system that you currently have. You appreciate my videos? Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Let me take a look here. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to go. I love you guys. Thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. And I'm thankful for all of you. Um, and um, I can't wait to, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to, uh, to do this again. I have a lot more videos coming out again. Please check out the podcast. Uh, Jason Lanier, John Wick, baby. Uh, JasonLanier.com slash podcast. Check it out. And uh, I'll see you guys later. So until next time, keep shooting. Never give up on your dreams. Find out that works for you. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.